Hello, pre-calculus students. This is Miss Robinson. We are continuing with example 1c in 4.5. So 1c, we're given another rational function. This time, h of x equals x squared plus 4 over x to the fourth power minus 1. And we're still using those same seven steps to analyze the graph of this rational function. So step 1. We look back at our notes. Step one asks us to factor the numerator and denominator of our rational function. Okay, so let's look at this numerator. If we look at this numerator, we would see that it is not factorable. x squared plus 4, not happening. So we are going to leave it x squared plus 4. Nothing to do with that numerator. The denominator, however, is factorable. And if we consider this as two perfect squares, x to the fourth and one, we see that this is a difference of squares here. The square of x to the fourth is x squared. The square of one is one. So we can write this as x squared minus one and x squared plus one. Okay. We, however, can continue here, right? Again, we know numerator is not factorable. But x squared minus 1 is still factorable. So we can continue this and turn this into x plus 1 and x minus 1. Difference of squares again. x squared plus 1, however, is not factorable. So that one remains as it is. Okay. Fully factored rational function. All right. That's not it for step one, though. Step one also asks us to find the domain of the rational function. So we need to continue. We know that domain is wherever our x values do not give us a problem, so we need to identify where we cannot have x values. So we see that on the denominator, we would have an issue with x equals negative one. So we would get zero here. x equals positive one. So we would get a zero here. And then this here cannot give us any zeros. There's no way we can get zero for this factor. So those are all of our issues for the domain. Okay, now we can move on to step two. So step two, if we look back at our notes, step two asks us to write the rational function in its lowest terms, meaning to simplify. If we look at this function here, there's nothing really to simplify from the numerator and denominator, so we would just rewrite it as is. x squared plus 4. Don't forget that h of x equals, I'm sorry, x squared plus 4 over x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x squared plus 1. Okay, Nothing to cancel for this one, so step 2 is very easy. Step three is to locate the intercepts of the graph. So step three, start with x-intercepts. So we know the x-intercepts are where y equals zero, which is where our numerator equals zero. If we look at this numerator, however, we see that if we try to set this equal to zero, we are going to end up with negative four equals x squared. When we square root that, we are going to come up with imaginary answers meaning we have no real x-intercepts. So we would say that we have none. Kay. Y-intercepts, we know are where x equals zero. In order to find this out, we just need to plug in zero for x. So I'm gonna take this simplified form here, plug in zero for x. So I have zero squared plus four over zero plus one, zero minus one, zero squared plus one. 0 squared plus 4 is just 4. 0 plus 1, 1. 0 minus 1, negative 1. 0 squared plus 1, positive 1. Gives me a 4 over negative 1, which gives me a y-intercept at negative 4. Okay, that's it for step 3. Step 4 asks me to locate the vertical asymptotes. Now we remember, vertical asymptotes 
are the lines where my domain gave me issues earlier. So we saw that we had the issues at negative 1 and positive 1 for x. So we would say that our vertical asymptotes are at x equals negative 1 and at x equals positive 1. So those are our vertical asymptotes. Step five. We look back at step five. Step five asks us to locate the horizontal or oblique asymptotes of our function. Okay. So if we go back and think about our horizontal and oblique asymptote notes, we ask ourselves first off, whether we have an improper fraction. So if you remember, an improper fraction is where the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal, or where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. If we look at this function, neither one of those is the case. The degree of my denominator is larger than the degree of my numerator. If you remember, we said that when this is happening, we have a horizontal asymptote at just y equals zero. So since we do not have an improper fraction, we just have that horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, meaning we have no oblique asymptote. Okay. Now to check that, we would always see if our function can equal 0, where y equals 0. But if we think about what we've done earlier, we would know that our, y inter that our x intercept is where y equals 0. And we looked at that earlier. We know that we don't have an x-intercept because y never equals 0. So no intersection of that horizontal asymptote. Okay. Step 6. We are to graph it using our graphing utility, right? I'm going to look back at our notes. Graph the rational function using a graphing utility. So we're going to take out our graphing calculator and clear out any functions we have from earlier. Kay. We're going to graph our function. Remember we're going to graph our original so that we can check our work. Don't graph any already factored functions just in case you factored incorrectly. So we have x squared plus 4 divided by x to the fourth minus one. Oh. Sorry about that. Minus one. Again, be very careful about your parentheses. Make sure you're using those appropriately and accurately so that you have exactly the function that you want to be plugging in. Very easy to make mistakes with those parentheses. And we're going to graph this. We still have an odd window from a previous problem. So we're going to want to fix this window. We see we have a little bit down here. I want to see more of that. So I'm going to change my window. I usually just start with a standard window. Oh, sorry. Negative 10 to 10. Negative 10 to 10. Kay. See if this gives us a good idea of what's happening. And yes, I do see all the parts of my graph. However, I have a lot of wasted space in these areas over here. So I'm actually going to cut down my x window so I can see that a little bit better. So maybe negative 5 to 5 for my x window. And uh, yes, it's a little bit better. I'm seeing that function a little bit more closely, more intimately. Okay. Remember, we want to check what we've done so far. So we want to check things. We see that, no, we do not have any x-intercepts, so that's good. I can glance here and see, nope, does not look like I'm crossing that x-axis at all. I can see that, yes, it does look like I have a y-intercept at negative 4 here. So that's a good check so far. Vertical asymptotes. It does look like I have a vertical asymptote at negative 1 and 1. And remember, if we ever want to check that, we can go to our table, and we can look at our values for x equals negative 1 and 1. I should see errors. Perfect. I also see my intercept here. 0, negative 4. Kay. 
And then when I see if I want to see if I have any intersections with my horizontal asymptote. So I want to move and see if I'm ever crossing y equals zero. We can just go for a little ways. We see that we are getting very, very, very close to zero in this direction, but not quite hitting that. We might even want to go in the other direction. We're actually lucky for this problem since it seems to be going towards zero so quickly. We don't have very far to look before we start to see that this is getting much smaller, but not exactly crossing that. So very large, very small. Doesn't look like I'm crossing that horizontal asymptote. Okay, so good. We've checked our work. Now what we have left is just to write down the window that we used. So the window we used, we had an x minimum of negative 5, an x maximum of 5, a y minimum of negative 10, and a y maximum of positive 10. Okay, good. Last step, step 7. separate this from my other problem to be done. Step seven, if you remember, is to use the information that we've obtained so far, steps one through six, to graph our rational function. Okay, so make our grid. Okay, and let's start putting down information. So if we look back at the very beginning, we see the first information I have to plot. No x-intercept, but I have a y-intercept at negative four, so I can graph that. So I can go to y equals negative 4 and plot that point. Okay, making sure to label everything I write down. Okay. Then I see I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. So I can graph those. Again, we are being very careful to label everything as we go every asymptote we graph, every point we label. Okay. We also have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So we want to make sure to just identify that we have this asymptote here. Again, it's hard to see with the axis being there, but right to the side is fine. So we have all of our asymptotes. We have our one point here that we've obtained so far. Now, we have a little bit of information. We have this point in the center here. Now, this point here tells me that first I need to intersect this point. I cannot cross this asymptote here, so I cannot be going in this direction at all. So that means both directions need to point downwards, which means I should have somewhat of a parabola, downwards facing parabola in that region. But over here, I do not have any points to plot. I can use my graphing calculator to tell me which direction I should go, but just in case I didn't have my graphing calculator, I should try a point. So say we plug in 2. If I look back at my function, 2 squared plus 4 is going to give me 4 plus 4, which is 8, over 2 plus 1 is 3, times 2 minus 1 is 1, times 2 squared, 4 plus 1 is 5, gives me 8 over 15. Positive, so I know I'm somewhere up here, so I know I can graph this side above. No, I can't cross either of those asymptotes, so it should slope towards those asymptotes. Okay, And then to the far left side, I can plug in, say, negative 2. Now I should notice that this function right now when I plug in negative 2, if I look at my original I'm really plugging in a negative 2 into an x squared and x to the fourth. Now if I think about 2 versus negative 2, 2 squared and negative 2 squared should be the same. 2 to the fourth and negative 2 to the fourth should also be the same because I have that even exponent. So these values, when I plug them in, should actually be the same. I should also get 8 to the 15th, or 8 over 15, when I plug in negative 2. So it's going to be also positive. Okay. 
I want to, I can plot those points to show my accuracy, but it's not necessary. Okay. We do need to make sure, again, that we label all of our intercepts and all of our asymptotes. Okay. That's it for step 7, and that is it for 1C. Thank you very much. Continue on with me to 1D next.